HUD, 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 HUD. This is no joke. Kundalini yoga is extremely mentally tough. As somewhat torturous Kundalini yoga can be, I just cannot believe how different I felt by the end of these 40 days. Before we get into this video, there is something pretty serious that I need to address. The video you're about to see was mostly shot in the summer of 2019. However, during this past week, in the final stages of editing this video, I became aware of a recent controversy happening in the kundalini yoga community surrounding some pretty serious allegations against yogi bhajan the founder of the kundalini yoga movement in the west although yogi bhajan died in 2004 these issues being brought to light are unveiling a dark side to the kundalini story a book written by pamela sahara dyson otherwise known as premka was recently released. The book is about Pamela's experience as a devotee and direct assistant to Yogi Bhajan. This book has opened up a huge discussion in the Kundalini Yoga community and is unveiling a lot about what other women may have gone through in the past. I am currently in the middle of reading this book. The video you're about to watch is the story I was going to tell before knowing about any of this and before it was out in the open. It's about my personal experience trying the practice of kundalini yoga for 40 days. But now being aware of the situation, I am taking the time to properly educate myself. This includes reading Pamela's book, diving into forums and Facebook groups from people in the kundalini yoga community and researching the issue because this is important and I want to be well informed before I publicly address this. As for anyone you see appear in this video, I cannot speak to their current feelings about kundalini yoga or its founder since the recent allegations, but I appreciate all of them for sharing their personal thoughts and experiences as they were at the time that this was shot. I will be releasing a follow-up video that addresses these issues and shares my personal thoughts and opinions since this new information has come to light. So with all of that being said, let's get into this video. I would definitely describe kundalini yoga as a little bit out there. I mean, seeing a bunch of people wearing all white, chanting strange sounds and waving their arms around in aggressive, repetitive patterns sort of just screams cult. I'm not saying kundalini yoga is a cult, but it definitely gives off that vibe. So I've been practicing yoga for about 10 years now, and I've tried all sorts of styles of the practice, everything from ashtanga to baptist power, yin and bhakti yoga. But kundalini is one form of yoga I've only slightly doubted. In. To me, it always came across as a little bit too intense, a little too rigid, and a little too woo-woo. I mean, what is all the waving of the arms and chanting actually doing? But as kundalini yoga has surged in popularity over the past few years, it's become increasingly intriguing to me. So rather than place judgment on something that I've never actually given a real shot, I'm going to put kundalini yoga to the test. Over the next 40 days, I am going to practice kundalini yoga every single day single day through immersing myself in all sorts of kundalini classes and talking to teachers, experts, and kundalini yoga students to uncover why people seem to love this practice so much. The underlying reality of every human being is that it is full of infinite potential. Kundalini Yoga provides the manual to break through some of the unconscious limits that we have in life. In Sanskrit, the word actually means coiled snake. It was believed that each individual possesses a sacred divinity that resides in the base of the spine. This energy is basically the sacred energy of creation and we all have access to this. Kundalini Yoga is basically the practice of 
awakening this dormant energy, really turning this potential energy into kinetic energy that you can now start to use in your life to start clearing the path ahead for your full potential. Right off the bat, I noticed that Kundalini Yoga is a lot more spiritually minded than most Western forms of yoga. It's just completely different than most of these trendy fitness-based forms of yoga that are popular in the United States. Mantra, Set. breath, prayer, no. and intention Set. are far more no. emphasized in Kundalini Yoga than other forms of yoga I've practiced. Inner gaze up to the third eye for the directing the energy, connecting you to Father Sky, rooting you down to Mother Earth. Very soon into the class, I realized that Kundalini Yoga is a lot more challenging than I thought. It may not look that hard from the outside, but when you actually do it, it's like, oh shit. this is no joke. That was only 26, sometimes we have to do 108. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what? Using specific methods developed by Kundalini masters, we are able to disconnect from the worldly ego and really connect directly with universal consciousness, understanding the truth of our existence, and the truth of our existence is that we are part of this infinite consciousness, we are part of the creator, therefore the creator. When you understand that through the principle of Kundalini Yoga, then life becomes much easier to navigate. It may not look that intense, but that breathing exercise we did in that class was so challenging and frustrating. This is all about the mind. And the sensations of this may be painful. Ride through it. Allow the transformation to happen. You got this. Go, go, go. Last couple minutes. Minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Everything hurts. Oh. Every part of me just wanted to quit and stop doing it. And it went on and on and on for what felt like forever. Last 30 seconds. And exhale. <sighs> You did amazing. Oh my God. <laughs> that was so hard. It was, but you wanted something challenging, right? Uh, yeah. This definitely delivers. Good. I did not expect that. How long was that? It was 11 minutes. You did it for 11 minutes. And if you continue the practice, you'll find that your lungs open up even more, your mind opens yeah. up even more, and your limitations that you have about yourself and what you can and cannot do opens up. And that's the magic yeah. of Kundalini Yoga, is when you understand that you can make it through the impossible. Even though my first Kundalini class was highly uncomfortable, I felt amazing afterwards, and I realized that if I really wanna give this a fair shot, I gotta go all in. I had to commit to giving 150% in every kundalini yoga class I was going to attend for the next 40 days. I just woke up and honestly, I slept so well. That's the best I've slept in so long. The quality of how deeply I rested was just way different than the sleep I've been getting recently. During my kundalini yoga journey, I attended classes at both kundalini yoga by the sea and Rama Institute in Venice. All kundalini yoga classes involve following a specific kriya, which translates to purifying action in Sanskrit. In kundalini yoga, it's very important that you are following a kriya exactly as it's meant to be followed because apparently it's very specific to give you a specific outcome. So the way it was described to me is that it's like following a recipe for a cake, for example, where you need to follow it exactly if you want the cake to come out right. As I started to immerse myself in the Kundalini community, I was curious to know why other people would choose to practice this strange form of torture. How long have you been practicing Kundalini? About seven years. And I was looking at your skin and it's literally beautiful. <laughs> Thank you like, so much. And it doesn't look like you're wearing any makeup. I'm not wearing any makeup. Oh my Just gosh. my Kundalini prana vibes. Yeah, I've like aged in reverse. When I was about 22, I was going through a horrible time and I looked old, like depleted and sucked dry and now the prana will just regenerate all your cells. It's crazy. So the kundalini you think made your skin better? Yeah, I look younger, more vibrant, 
healthier, happier. It completely flopped my life around. A lot of things that were habits and such that I really wanted to change in my life and never really felt like I could just kind of naturally shifted through doing a daily practice of this where a lot of the negative things kind of dropped to the wayside. The direction I really kind of wanted to put my life just sort of opened up. I was looking at everything differently. I had this new perspective that was like a light of truth and I wasn't reacting. It's been able to hold me and guide me and it gave me tools for healing. It's been so beautiful. For thousands of years, the practice of kundalini yoga was was hidden from most of society and only taught in secrecy to the Indian royalty and elite from a chosen master to a chosen disciple. Teaching this yoga outside these elite communities was strictly forbidden. Until this guy Yogi Bhajan came along and decided to break all the rules. Originally named Harbhajan Singh Khalsa, Yogi Bhajan is said to have been declared a yoga master at the age of 16. He then came to the West in 1968 during the counterculture movement and witnessed the youth of the time Time, seeking altered states of consciousness in a spiritual path, mainly through drugs. Yogi Bhajan wanted to provide a spiritual alternative so that these young hippies could access the same states naturally through awakening their kundalini energy. With that, the modern kundalini movement was born in the West with Yogi Bhajan as the leading guru. He taught over 8,000 kundalini yoga classes and started the first ever teacher training program where he trained thousands of future yogis and teachers. He also found founded the 3HO Foundation, the Kundalini Research Institute, and the popular brand Yogi Tea. Yogi Bhajan died in 2004, but his photo hangs proudly in almost every Kundalini yoga studio. During my Kundalini yoga journey, I noticed that Yogi Bhajan was mentioned in pretty much every Kundalini yoga class I attended. I get that Yogi Bhajan is the founder, the leader, the guy who kind of made kundalini happen for the world but the fact that his picture is everywhere in all these kundalini studios and they talk about him all the time he feels like a cult leader whenever any organization is following one leader and they're believing everything that that person taught and said which is basically what's happening with kundalini and yogi bhajan that to me is a red flag i have my suspicions i have a lot of questions i have to dive more into the history of this practice and really get to the bottom of this. It is not a cult. There's no initiation. There's no rules. You don't have to do anything. You can come from any religion. You can be an atheist. It's a science and a spiritual practice that works whether you believe in it or not. Kundalini yoga is often referred to as a science, which really had me scratching my head at first. So I decided to look and see if there was actually any science and research to support Kundalini yoga's benefits. I was pleasantly surprised to find that we do have some research to support some of the big claims being made about Kundalini. A peer-reviewed randomized controlled trial published in 2016 conducted by researchers at UCLA found that Kundalini yoga improved memory, cognitive function, and a reduction in depressive symptoms amongst a group of elderly individuals aged 55 and up who were suffering from mild cognitive impairment. A study published in 2017 found that practicing kundalini yoga helped lower levels of the stress hormone cortisol, and a study published in 2018 found that at the end of an eight-week period, the experimental group practicing kundalini yoga improved symptoms of general anxiety disorder compared to the control group receiving standard cognitive treatment. While attending classes at Rama, I started hearing a lot about the studio's founder named Guru Jagat. Apparently, she's a pretty big deal in the kundalini yoga world, having opened several Rama locations and creating Rama TV, where all of Rama's classes are streamed for kundalini practitioners around the world. Guru Jagat is not only a popular spiritual leader, but clearly an intelligent business businesswoman, which was very appealing to me. I believe work is holy and making money and being able to support and use resources in a way where you put your money where your mouth is, that's holy, that's spiritual. And the idea of spirituality being a bunch of people who don't have enough money to actually make change in the world is a total passe idea. If our spiritual leaders also become our business leaders and our political leaders, we're going to be in much better position than we are now. What? age were you when you found Kundalini? I was 22, I guess. I had just turned 22, which was just like, you know, last year. 
By the looks of your skin, yes. This stuff works. <laughs> mm -hmm. How have you used Kundalini to create such a powerful business and how can Kundalini be something that you use in order to do that in your life? You can't learn this stuff in regular business school. I have people who come here from the Harvard Business Schools and the Yale Business Schools, the Stanford, and from Ivy League business schools who come to my business school and say that they've never been taught the things that we teach here. Have you ever gotten criticism and what has it been? Constant. Haters gonna hate. If you're actually doing something, there will be an opposition to what you're doing. If you're not actually doing something, then nobody cares. So you gotta keep on singing your song and doing your art and people are gonna hate you and people are gonna be jealous of you and you just keep going. What do you say to people who think Kundalini is some type of cult? Look up the definition of cult. It's an organized uh, place where people come and have the same beliefs. You could say that that's your hiking club. I mean, it could be anything. That word basically was propagandized in the 60s and 70s to mean something in the, particularly the American psyche or the Western psyche. And if that's gonna be the thing that keeps people from doing something that, that betters their daily life, they're not my people anyways. Cause you have to have a certain type of neuron velocity and intelligence to want to make your life better and to start to experiment with what that looks like. The product I'm offering is for people who want to do that. I feel like I've been hit by a bus. I am so exhausted and I'm hitting a major wall. Around week three and four is when I found this challenge to be really hard to keep up with. I got super busy and it was a real struggle to ensure that my practice got done every day. So during this time, I would actually do at home practices watching videos of Guru Jagat on Gaia, which is a streaming service for conscious media with a huge library of at home yoga videos including many kundalini practices. If you are interested in trying out kundalini yoga for yourself or you want access to other conscious media that you can't find anywhere else, be sure to head over to my Gaia portal, gaia.com slash skylife, where I've curated some of my favorite kundalini yoga videos for you to try. Right now, Skylife Vibe Tribe members can join Gaia with a seven-day free trial. Just click the link in the video description to check it out. Gaia was a huge help to me during this time Time when I just couldn't get to the studio for a class. Some nights I was getting my practice done at 11 p.m. But the most important thing is that I was able to stick with it and just get it done. At some point, I heard through the grapevine about a legendary kundalini yoga teacher named Krishnakar, an 80-year-old woman who teaches all over the world, but also hosts classes out of her home through word of mouth only. So I decided to go and check it out. Prosperity, prosperity, prosperity is perpetual with people who prefer to be penetrating, prepared, and purposeful. But Prosperity only comes to those who are trustworthy, content, and consistent. Krishna Kar's class was super challenging, but also so fun and playful. The community there was amazing, and I got to meet some really kind, awesome people. There were also the cutest kids in that class getting into it, and I feel like it was so fun to see all these different ages, all these different types of people coming to practice together. I left that class feeling super inspired and empowered. What advice do you have for me? Because you're the master. <laughs> <laughs> the master's in you. Oh, that's the advice. Nice. <laughs> you. Just listen and don't run away from it. Quite a lot of kundalini yoga teachers I met seem to be pretty skilled in business and would talk about using kundalini to succeed and manifest wealth and abundance. Although this was very appealing to me, I didn't necessarily believe them or know how that would work. But then some weird things started happening in my life that made me think maybe they were right. I have actually noticed real examples of things manifesting in my life. Maybe it's a coincidence, but also I'd like to think that it's due to the kundalini and I want to keep doing it to bring more, to bring more in. Not in a greedy way, but just in a way that allows me to live my best life and live my purpose. Our mind is what holds us back from everything in life. And what kundalini does is it helps you get beyond the mind. Go beyond 
those limiting beliefs. I've really found a lot of empowerment through that. Anyone that tries Kundalini, I've seen them benefit. And if Kundalini is not right for you, then you do whatever else is. You're not gonna go wrong if you give it a try. By the end of this challenge, there was a noticeable difference and a noticeable shift in my life. I did not notice too much of a physical change for myself personally, but I did notice a huge mental shift. And the biggest thing I noticed was a massive increase in my self-confidence. Because every time I would overcome those limiting beliefs in my mind and prove to myself that I could actually do it, I would believe in myself a little bit more. My intuition and my connection to myself strengthened so much during these 40 days. If you want to try out Kundalini Yoga at home for yourself, be sure to sign up for Gaia and get access to their awesome library of at-home yoga videos taught by teachers like Guru Jagat and Krishnakar. Just click on the link I added in the video description to check it out. Alrighty, beautiful people, that is it for this episode of Sky Life. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up and please let me know what you thought in the comments below. And I want to remind you that you have the power to thrive, you have the power to live your best life ever. I will see you next week. Bye!